QuickBooks Online 2023 Progress Invoicing Example 2 Excel Worksheet Setup. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation. Note that we're in the accounting view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top, switch the view down below. Let's open up a few tabs, duplicating some tabs to put reports in. Right click the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click the duplicate a tab to duplicate again. Back to the tab to the middle. Reports on the left hand side. We're looking for the balance sheet, the balance sheet report. And I'm going to date range that from 0101 and let's say uh, 25 to 06325. All we have in there thus far is going to be the amount that we put the deposit into the checking account, the other side in the billings. There's nothing on the profit and loss, but let's verify that by going to the reports the profit and loss, closing up the boogie and changing the range 010125 to 06325 and run it. Nothing, nothing there thus far. All right, let's go back to the first tab. Now we're gonna be, I'm gonna put this in an Excel worksheet as well because I think sometimes to see the transparent format of Excel is useful. So I'm gonna build an Excel worksheet and if you don't wanna build an Excel worksheet, you don't have to. Uh, we'll, we can put it into QuickBooks, but I just want to show you what I'm doing from the ground up so that if you if you wanted to follow along with it, uh, you can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create like a journal entry, which is more transparent way to see something than the database, pro database program in QuickBooks. And then I'll make a little trial balance, which will allow us to see what's going on uh, on one page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a skinny column over here. I'm going to make it the same, the same skinniness by selecting column C, home tab, format painter, gonna make a skinny column over here. I'm gonna put our transactions in a journal entry format here. So I'm gonna say the date will be in this column, account that will be affected. And then I'm gonna say debit, debit. I'm gonna put debit and then credit on the second line, credit. And the credits I'm gonna put in as negative numbers. If you're not familiar with debits and credits, that's okay because the concept will still be there and we can introduce some debits and credits. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut and then put it right here. So it lines up to the bottom. I'm going to make this a header format for me. And that usually means I'm going to select the whole thing, go to the first tab font. I'm going to make it letters white and the background black. And then typically I'll center it. And this second one, I'm going to make my credits be negative because negative numbers are going to be red. I'm going to make it red because <laughs> negative numbers are going to be red. So the credits will be red and bracketed. So I'm going to put the credits and the, the debits and the credits in the same column and represent that they're going to be credits. I'm going to make this wider by the credits being negative numbers. So that might be new to some people. Sometimes that bothers people but it's actually the most efficient way to put it into like an Excel sheet, which is quite useful. So then I'm going to say uh, the next let's put let's build our trial balance. I'm going to let's make another skinny. So I'm going to take this skinny and make a skinny J and I'm going to put the accounts. Let's do the same the same format. I'm going to say accounts and then I'll say the entries entries and then i'm going to say uh, i'm sorry this is going to be the accounts these are going to be the beginning 
trial balance. And then these are gonna be the entries, or let's say journal, journal entries. And then the ending trial balance. I'm abbreviating balance, something like that. And then I'm gonna center these again and make them my headers, black and white, center them. And then this one I'm gonna make black and white and I won't center it, I'll keep that as it. Sometimes I don't center this one too, I'll make that uncentered. And so there we, so there we have that. And then the accounts, I'm just gonna put the normal accounts that are gonna be affected. So we have the checking account, checking that we're gonna deal with accounts accounts receivable we're going to be dealing with a work in progress account we're going to have a billings account we're going to have a retained earnings or equity account let's just call it equity account retained earnings something like that and then depends if you're sole proprietorship partnership corporation but revenue or income cost of goods let's say goods sold and let's say equity account let's be kind of consistent here with my capitalization and cost of goods sold and then i'm going to have the total total debits and say credits bracketed with the credits making it red again to show that the credits are gonna be negative. And there we have it. So the beginning balances are just gonna be zeros because we're just gonna start from a blank slate. So there's nothing in our worksheet yet. So I'll just sum it up. Probably don't even need this column because of that, but I think it's still useful to have this format. And in the middle column, that's gonna be our journal entries. I'm gonna make that blue. That's what I usually do when we're doing the data input. So I'm gonna right click here I'm going to go to the, the bucket and I'm going to call that blue. And then I need to put some def defini definition. So I like to go to the format and then add the borders with the all borders. And then the ending balance is going to be the beginning balance plus the journal entries, which I can sum up equals the sum of these two. You'll see how this works once we post those first two journal entries we already did. So then I'm gonna copy that down. I'm gonna put my cursor on this fill handle right here, drag it on down. And that just does the same formula all the way down. And then I wanna sum it up at the bottom. So I'm gonna grab this formula, grab the fill handle, drag it to the right, which will sum up each column, summing up each column. And then I'm gonna underline here. So I'm gonna to go to the home tab, font group underline, there we have it. And then I'm gonna have a net income calculation at the bottom, net income. I like to differentiate the income statement from the balance sheet components, which is right there. There's the defining account in the middle of our trial balance. I'm gonna to go to the home tab, font group, and make that dark blue and, uh, and white, just to show that's the middle point. This is the income statement this is our balance sheet accounts. And then I'll sum up the income statement, which will be equals the sum of the revenue minus the expenses. The expenses, the revenue will be credits and the expenses will be uncredits. So it'll subtract them by formula. So I'll say, there it is. And I'll copy that across. Now this might look quite abstract, but let's go ahead and I'll make this whole thing font group brackets. So there's our structure. And then I'll make some blue data input fields over here, which I'm gonna right click and say, this will be blue and bordered. And then our date field on this side, we need to format the date. So I'm gonna right click, format the cells, and we'll say I need to make it like some kind of date field. I don't want the year really. So I just need the month and the days. So I'll pick this one. Okay, so now our first transaction is on 1-1. One, one. So remember what we did in QuickBooks is we, we entered an estimate. So there is no transaction, no journal entry for the estimate because there's no effect on the financial statements. So then the first transaction we did after that was 
we sent out an invoice for the deposit, but we told the invoice to to uh, record it a little bit uh, to the, to the billings account. So let me just check that out one more time, and we'll we'll record that first transaction just so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're gonna say we had an invoice and invoices increase accounts receivable, but then we, and then the other side usually goes to revenue driven by the item, but then we've reduced the revenue and instead put it into the billings account. Therefore, we had an increase in accounts receivable and the other side going to the billings account. So let's do that. I'm gonna say, all right, we know it. I'm going to I'm going to do this by going equals accounts receivable is going to be the debit account. And then the other side is going to be equals the billings account. And the amount is going to be I'm going to pull it from my data on the left. It's going to be equal to that $10,000. The, the billings is going to be negative because that's how we're going to re reflect our credits. So negative of the number of above it is the billings account 10,000. If I record that to my trial balance, I can go into my my accounts receivable in M4, say equals, and go over to my accounts receivable, 10,000. And then in I4, or I, I can go to M6 and say equals and go over to my billings. So there's the first transaction uh, we put in place and it sums back up to zero. Right before we recorded the second one, it was out of balance. Now it sums back up to zero. And then if I record the second thing that happened on 115, we received a payment. So if I go back on over and say, all right, the next thing that happened uh, is that is that we got a payment here. So the payment's gonna reduce the, the accounts receivable and go into the checking account. So I'm gonna say equals the checking account and goes up with a debit accounts receivable goes down and it's also going to be for the 10,000 so I'm just going to say equals the 10,000 from the journal entry above negative of the one above it is going to be that and then I'm going to go check an account in M3 it's going to be equal to we'll pick up the 10,000 and then the accounts receivable is going to go down there's something in accounts receivable already so I'm going to double click on it go to the end of it and say plus this number which is negative because it's a credit from a from a plus and minus standpoint it's going to bring this one down to zero right debits and credit plus and minus brings it back down to zero so there we have it now i'm going to add one more little touch to this i'm going to i'm going to this is our check number down here that we are in balance so what i'd like to do is say if this is out of balance i want to make it red and if it's in balance i want to make it green so i'm going to do a conditional formatting by going to the home tab style conditional formatting and i'd like the rules and say if it's greater than greater than i'm going to see that there's i'm going to account for the possibility for there be rounding error of let's say two dollars rounding error so if it's off by two dollars high i would like you to turn it red so i'm going to say okay so if i delete this for example it turns red because it's off it's high by ten thousand if it's low by ten thousand I'm going to select these. I want you to turn it red. Conditional formatting, highlight. If it's less than negative two, turn it red. So in other words, if I delete this one now, negative 10,000 turns red. Positive, negative turns red. If it's between negative two and two, we want it to be green. So I'm going to go home tab, style, conditional formatting, between negative two and two if it's within that range because it should be zero but if it's in the range of negative two to two i want you to be green so that we can account for give it a little room for rounding all right and so now it's green so if it goes negative we're out of balance turns red if it's positive out of balance if it's zero or within the range of one to two you know negative two then we're still good because hopefully that's just rounding and we're still okay. All right, so there's our there's our general worksheet. Again, if you don't want to put together the worksheet, that's okay because we can. But we, I think it's a useful tool to follow along with the worksheet, so that we can see the journal entries and the impact on just like a trial balance. 
type of format and then we can take that and add the added layers of QuickBooks which adds in like reporting the, the financial statements by date and reporting the financial statements by class, you know, and by project and, and that kind of stuff that w adds like a dimension instead of a two dimensional thing that we're looking at here that kind of adds like another kind of three dimensional kind of component that we can manipulate the data in that way. Let's spell check it over here. Spell check. All right. That's our process. So going forward, we will uh, we'll continue recording. We'll, we'll start to think about what actually happens with the costs, and then we'll continue our billing process and think about the revenue recognition kind of issues as we think about our billing.